have a tremendous amount of virus going on. Think about sulfur, guys. How cool. Hey guys, welcome back to Keys Moz. Last time we uh, found a whole bunch of pink spot sulfur caterpillars and we brought them inside, we're feeding them and we're doing the whole raising them inside on cuttings thing. But in this episode, you're gonna see what happens when you overcrowd your containers. So uh, unfortunately, this is something that happens with certain species are more delicate. We do have some success, but we got a lot of great information for you. So guys, stay tuned. Don't forget to go to keysmoths.com to get all kinds of info about butterflies and moths of South Florida and the Florida Keys. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we got plenty of videos coming your way and give us a thumbs up if you find this content interesting, funny, uh, uh, useful, whatever. So. guys we need more food for our um our larvae so what we're going to do is we got to come out but here's the deal the caterpillars that are on this tree are actually doing a good number on all the new growth so there's really not a whole lot left but i also guys want to show you something as i'm picking food at night so it's, it is night outside i got a little flashlight in my head but i'm i also have one of these little uv flashlights and this is pretty cool because I'm going to turn my headlamp off. And I want to show you guys something. How you can search for caterpillars with UV lights. Check out how caterpillars light up iridescent colors. This guy is iridescent green when you put them under UV lights. And this, this tree is totally loaded with caterpillars watch this guys uv lights these black lights uh flashlights really light up these caterpillars like like iridescent green look at this look at this thing isn't that crazy how they just light right up man look at this iridescent green guys there are caterpillars all over this tree you can see them up there Anywhere you see that, that, that green thing light up, those are actually butterfly caterpillars, guys. Let's see how many of these things are there on this, on this tree. Look at that. Iridescent green caterpillars. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. Look, there's another one. Look. Glowing caterpillars, guys. <laughs> That's crazy. There's so many on this tree. Now, I'm, a, I'm a little nervous because I think they've probably eaten all of the new growth off of this tree. There's a bunch of large caterpillars on here, guys. So I don't know how many of these things are actually going to make it through because there are so many on this tree and there is no new growth left. And guys, this growth right here I don't know if you can tell, but it's old and hard. They will not eat that stuff. They'll starve to death. So I don't know what these things are going to eat. But there are just literally caterpillars everywhere, all over this tree, guys. Okay, enough of the UV light. I'm actually going to turn my headlamp back on. And that's the real color of the caterpillars, guys. Um, notice the difference. Got normal light. UV light, how they light up different colors and they glow under the UV light. It's pretty cool. So I actually do need to get some food for the caterpillars. And I got to see, guys, but there's, as you can see, there is no new growth left on this tree. And that is part of the problem with raising sulfurs because when a sulfur, female sulfur finds a tree that's got fresh growth on it, she'll obliterate the thing with eggs and there's just there are just way too many caterpillars they literally eat themselves out of house and home and i don't see any new growth anywhere on this tree all right folks so it's been 
Uh, 24 hours since I last cleaned this container. As you can see, we just went out to get food for these guys, but there's nothing left out there. So we are going to have to see what we can do. Um, guys, there's still green biomass in here, but I get news for you. That's all old uh, food. This is not stuff that the caterpillars are gonna eat. So I really don't know what we're gonna do. I literally might have to go find some fresh food for them tomorrow, see if I can find another tree with new growth on it. But a um, couple of cool things to show you. Whenever you're doing raising uh, butterfly caterpillars, it's always cool to check out and see what other types of caterpillars you might find on your cuttings. This is actually a uh, geometric caterpillar, an inchworm that was on the Lysoloma. And guys, to be honest, I have no idea what it is. So we are going to try and raise this guy out and see what he becomes because you never know, down here in South Florida, we might actually have a neat uh, you know, host plant record for, for a moth. So we are gonna check out this little guy and see what he might become. Right, so now we're gonna clean out our container and see how we're going to try and care for these critters. So now, here's the deal, guys. Um, there is no more new growth on here, but I wanna show you what happens. We have to be careful with pyrids or sulfurs because they're caterpillars. When they run out of new growth and all they have is this old stuff, the caterpillars will cannibalize their siblings. And so we gotta be careful like the larger caterpillars will cannibalize the younger siblings. And when you have a, 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 a fresh new pupa like this, so here we actually have our first pupae, uh, chrysalis of the pink spot sulfur in here. Uh, if you don't pull these guys out, the new caterpillars will actually eat those. So now here we have a J position caterpillar. This guy is totally vulnerable to predation and to cannibalization if we were to allow that to happen. So we gotta make sure we pull these out of this container so that they don't get eaten. Now, when they are in this J position, as in this caterpillar, or in this pupal stage, uh, this pupa, guys, is brand new and it's very soft. It's very soft to the touch. In fact, they should not be handled at all because the pupa has not hardened yet. So what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna show you kind of one of the ways that I set up new pupae or a chrysalis or even pre pupil or J position larvae in other containers. So what I did is I got this other container and what I did was I'm going to literally just tape these chrysalis. I've got multiple chrysalis in here, by the way, I'm going to tape those chrysalis to the lid of this Tupperware container and I'm just going to let them hang out inside of this Tupperware container. But what I'm going to do is I've actually, I have this paper towel ramp set up uh, because ha what happens when the butterfly emerges, if for some reason the butterfly falls down onto the paper towel, they need to be able to quickly crawl up something to be able to hang upside down. Or if they don't do that, then they won't be able to spread their wings and they'll, they'll die and they won't, or they'll be deformed and they won't be able to fly. So uh, here's what I'm gonna do guys. I'm gonna show you all how to do this. Very simple. I've got my, my chrysalis here and I'm just going to cut it off. I'm going to tape this stem just like this onto the container like this so the chrysalis can hang upside down because you want them hanging upside down so when the butterfly emerges it'll be able to emerge properly. So that's simple and I can probably tape you know a half a dozen or so in this container and be safe. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this little pre-pupil or this uh, J position larva here. Same thing there, guys, you gotta be super careful with J position caterpillars. If you, if you knock them off of their little uh, girdle or their silk pad, they're, they're gonna struggle, they're gonna die, they won't be helped. I'm gonna tape that guy into the lid of my container just like that, so now, he can hang upside down comfortably in his J position and he'll be able to make his chrysalis just like that. Uh, we still have a big mess to go through here because we've got pupa 
and other caterpillars. Guys, check this out. I want to show you guys something. Um, this, I probably had a little too much, too many caterpillars in this one container. And so I want to show you guys some of the things that happened. This pupa actually got eaten off of its stem. So that's actually a full, uh, nice, solid, full-grown pupa. Um, it looks pretty healthy, but it did get chewed off of its um, of, of this thing here. So, and actually there's a couple of them down here. So we're going to pull this off and actually guys, check this out. We actually have some sick caterpillars. Cause I think I had too much moisture. So there's actually some sick caterpillars down there. You can see this one over here in the corner. He looks virused and there's definitely a sick one right down there. So guys had too many caterpillars in this container and that can be a problem if you're trying to have healthy caterpillars. Uh, we're going to show you something. How do we take care of these? How we take care of these caterpillars that make their chrysalis on the side of the container? Uh, that can be a little bit of a challenge. It actually looks like this guy was going over to start actually cannibalizing its sibling there. <laughs> Um, he's probably ran out of food and was looking for something to eat. He was, thought his sibling might be a good candidate, but we're going to save that chrysalis before that happens. Um, but one of the things you can do, if once your chrysalis on the side of the container uh, hardens, you can get a piece of scotch tape just like this and come up to the silk pad with this guy. Tape the silk pad and then what I'm going to do is peel it off there it comes all right perfect so now literally this chrysalis I just peeled it off because it creates a silk pad to hang from and I was able to peel it off with this piece of tape so I'm going to do the same thing bring this guy over here to our little container and I'm going to tape him right here and he can hang upside down and uh, emerge properly when it's time for him to emerge. So he's ready to go. Now, another thing that happens is down here on the, on the bottom of this container, you can see that I've got another J position caterpillar. Now I've got a piece of this paper towel hanging there. Now this guy's already attached by his cremaster to the silk pad that's on this paper towel. So, we don't want to mess with that, but what we can do, I can pinch off a corner of the paper towel. And now what I'm going to do, take a piece of tape and tape the paper towel piece like that. So now let's see what I got going here, guys. I got a piece of tape on the paper towel, the J position caterpillar. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue, I'm just going to tape this J position caterpillar right onto the lid of my little container here and it should be able to hang upside down just like that and be ready to make its chrysalis with its with his buddies here okay folks so here's the deal we've got our plant here that's got no new growth on it and we've probably got a half a dozen caterpillars left on here Hopefully they make it until tomorrow. I'll try and bring them some new growth, but to be honest with you guys, a lot of times when they go this long without new growth, um, a lot of times they die. So that's part of the problem with raising large sulfurs is they are very sensitive. Uh, I do have some trees in my area that I can go and try and look for new growth, but my little tree in the front yard, as you can see, has nothing left. So I'm gonna put them back in here and I'm gonna get my, uh, put my lid on there but the success story is this guys uh, my in this container uh, in just two short days after pulling these larvae I've got eight pre pupil caterpillars and nine pupae so I've literally have got 17 pupa that are going to come out of that group even if none of these caterpillars none of those caterpillars make it through I'm going to have 17 viable pupae here and so I've got them in this container here now guys so what we got the caterpillars that are on the bottom they are pre pupil they've got that that real solid kind of orangish pink line 
going down the side of the of the caterpillar that that real strong line indicates that they are pre-pupil and they're starting to change color so we know they're going to be pupa here soon so we're going to allow them to crawl up to the top of the container and make a pupa where they see fit so guys in a couple uh, in a couple days i'm going to show you what this looks like when they're all pupae okay guys it's been a couple days since we taped our chrysalis up on the lid of this tupperware and unfortunately um, i haven't looked at it in a few days but this is what happens when you overcrowd your chrysalis or your caterpillars we have a tremendous amount of virus going on here in fact, we've got only one, two, it looks like three viable pupa out of all those chrysalis, there's only three viable pupa left. Um, all the rest of virus, unfortunately. So uh, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. I guess that was a seven. <laughs> uh, eight, nine, 10, maybe 11 that have virus. So uh, guys, just that's how sensitive these giant sulfurs are. And you really gotta be super careful with how you treat them. Uh, you cannot overcrowd the caterpillars in their containers. In fact, a lot of people that raise Phoebus and, and Afrisa species, they actually raise them one larva per cup just to avoid this virus. And, and I don't know, man, it's a, it's a shame. It's heartbreaking, but we're down to three viable pupa out of that whole bunch so uh, hopefully these three will emerge uh, correctly and we'll at least get a couple adults out of it all right folks so here's the deal we had our first pink spot sulfur emerge looks like it's a nice female you can vaguely see the pink spot on the side of the thorax through the plastic yeah you can see it there it's pink spot sulfur female uh, we still have three chrysalis it looks like two of them are about to emerge look she's getting ready to to, uh, to fly here so you know one of the things that you want to do when you're setting up your chrysalis you got to make sure that there's this ramp in case they fall down like this before their wings dry they're able to crawl back up and uh, and hang properly so our pink spot sulfur is there and she looks like she's ready to fly so guys let's take her outside and let her go so she can fly Okay, here we go. All right, guys, there is a pink spot sulfur, a male, freshly emerged male, and you can see the very bright pink spot right at the base of the thorax on the hind wing. And that little pink spot is the biggest indicator of the species. So the other, uh, Afrisa statira, does not have that pink spot. And this is so cool that this thing guy just landed right in our Anona tree. And he's freshly emerged, so he's probably still kind of drying. Oh, there he goes. Let's see, there he's flying, 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 flying. Pink spot sulfur, guys. How cool. There he is, he just landed again. Neat. All right, folks, hope you learned something there. Hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did like the video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're gonna show you all about the butterflies and moths of South Florida. Uh, we do have a great website. It's www dot keysmoths.com we have all 593 species of the florida keys moths listed there for you to check out i mean there's tons of information there um guys we got some great lineup of videos coming your way so don't forget to hit that bell for notifications uh so i hope you learned something about raising large sulfurs in south florida again urban south florida guys there's plenty of bugs to be had all we got to do is know what plants to plant what um how to look and we can have a good time with nature right in our backyard. So guys, 
talk to you soon. I hope to see you out in the field someday, and uh, let's get out there and enjoy South Florida. Take care.